In this video, I will discuss the task for load instruction, store and branch instruction. Let's start with the load instruction first. Here I have declared uh, different local variables for supporting the task operation like op1 which is 32 bits sign type, op code 7 bits, function 3 3 bit, rh1 5 bit, IMMI 12 bits, RD 5 bit, result L 32 bit, string underscore CMD that is to hold the string value you can see here that is 40 down to 0, IMMI 32 bit. I have declared here an array whose depth is 1024 and the width is 32 bits again. This array will be acting like a data memory over here. Temp underscore I is 32 bits. Then I have data underscore byte, I have taken 8 bits, data underscore half, I have taken 16 bits. Now I have generated the stimulus like this. Op1, I have randomized. Op code, I have given the value relevant to the type of instruction for load. Function 3, I have initialized to 0 initially. RS1, I have set to 2. IMMI is randomized. RD, I have set to 5. Then as per the equation for IS standard for L type instruction, the IMMI has been calculated. So if you look at the for the I type, I mean for the load type, if you see, I mean load is again I type. So for load, the IMMI value is a sign extension for the IMM 12 bits. So to support this equation, the formula has been used, which I have already discussed in the previous task. You can see here, that's how we are calculating IMMI. And then I'm storing or writing the operand 1 to the integer file at the address location rs1. And what I'm doing, I'm trying to initialize the data memory at location rs1 plus immediate. Here rs1 is nothing but operand 1. So at the address operand 1 plus immediate, I'm writing some random value. This is going to act like my data to be loaded to the processor register. And you can see uh, after I initialize to that address, the same data I'm writing it to or I'm driving it to the processor data in bus. Uh, instruction HDD in have asserted and the data is response in. That is the data is response in. I have de asserted because that's an active low signal. And then uh, I'm checking the operation value. If the operation matches with load byte, I'm trying to store op1 plus immi in the temporary variable temp underscore add. So this is going to act like an address because we know for low type instruction, the address is rs1 plus immediate, right? So the same I'm putting over here in the case expression and I'm checking if it is 00, zero the last two bits, it would like a byte, but which byte? So from the data in, I'm trying to perform a path select 7 down to 0 and that I'm storing to data underscore byte. For 0, 1, 15 down to 8 I'm storing, 1, 0, 23 down to 16 is getting stored here. For 1, 1 we are storing 31 down to 24 but this is a byte operation. And then I'm calculating a result L which will be the data byte which is 8 bits and then because this is a signed loading, I'm replicating the signed bit of data byte 24 times to make it 32 bits and string command will be displayed as LB that is load byte. Similarly for load half word if you see when the temp add the last bit 1 I am checking if it is 0 we are loading 15 down to 0 if it is 1 it is 31 down to 16 the result L is calculated as data half where I am replicating or I am performing a sign extension that is data half 15 16 times to make it 32 bits. And here the function 3 is now updated to 3 tick D001 and string command is LH. When it is load word, if you see temp pad is again, that is the address that is op1 plus IMMI. Now for because it is a word, so I have to assign the complete 32 bit data to result L. Function 3 is set to 3 tick D010. The string command is load word. Similarly for load byte unsigned, load half word unsigned, if you look at the behavior remains same. The only thing is in the result L, instead of doing a sign extension of data byte, we have to obtain extra zeros. So for byte and sign, 24 zeros have to be extended or appended. And uh, you can see the value function 3 is 3 tick D100. 
the string command is lbu similarly when it is load half unsigned again uh, result l will be appended with 16 zeros and function 3 set to 36b101 rest logic remains same you can see here and uh, string command i have set to lhu okay uh, so i hope this will be clear and once i do that i'm driving the instruction input where i concatenate immi rs1 function 3 rd of 4 in this order now here uh, after waiting for some cycles that is three cycles i'm comparing the actual result that is lu that is from the load unit dot lu underscore output so basically the actual load output i'm comparing with expected result l which i have calculated in the tb if there's a mismatch it will it will display the load type of particular instruction is not working again it will display the time and a fail message if there's a match the load instruction is working perfect and i'm displaying the expected result with the actual result or should match right and rest concept remains same so this is how you can declare the task for the load instruction the next task is a store instruction here let me explain the task variables that i have declared here these are op1 op2 sign variable in 32 bits opcode is 7 bit function 3 3 bit rs2 rs1 5 bits the immi 12 bits rd 5 bits result s 32 bits string underscore cmd i have declared as 40 down to 0 immi is 32 bit here also i have declared as array data mem whose depth is 1024 and the width is 32 bits temp add and temp underscore add to i have taken two variables in 32 bit byte d out 32 bit half for d out 32 bit after that i am generating the stimulus for these variables op1 i have randomized op2 i have driven some values in hex form opcode i have set to the relevant opcode value for s type instruction function 3 i have initialized to 0 rs2 i have set to 5 rs1 to 2 immi i have set to 12 tick d10 rd i have set to 5 tick d8 now based on the equation for s type that is sign extension to immi 11 down to 0 i have calculated immi using the same formula and then i am writing op1 to the integer file at the location rs1 op2 to the integer file at the address location rs2 then i am setting instruction is ready in and data is ready in and i am calculating temp underscore add which is equal to op1 plus immi temp underscore add 2 i am calculating which is temp underscore add 31 down to 2 and I'm concatenating 2 tick D00 towards the right hand side. This adjustment is done for address alignment. Okay. After that, I'm checking the operation. If the operation matches with store byte, then I'm checking the value of temp underscore add 1 down to 0. If it is 0, 0, it is going to store a byte. So I'm calculating byte underscore D out. So up to last 7 down to 0 byte will be written and the rest will be append it to 0 for 0 1 it is by d out is up to 15 down to 8 and the rest bits are 0 0 so you can see the order so for 1 0 it is up to 23 down to 16 for 1 1 it is up to 31 down to 24 with the rest bits appended to 0 default value I have kept by d out to 0 and is by d out i'm assigned to result s and string command is store byte Similarly, for store half word, if you look at, I'm checking temp add bit number 1, bit is 0, I'm storing up to 15 down to 0, rest bit appended is 0. If it is 1, appending 16 tick d 0 towards the right hand side and towards the left hand side, I'm writing up to 31 down to 16 with a default value 0 and the half word d out, I'm assigning to result s. Function 3 updated to 3 tick d 0 0 1 and string command is sh. For store word, up to 32 bit directly assigned to result s, function 3 set to 3 tick d 0 1 0 and the string command is set to store word. Once this is done, I am generating the instruction input as per the standard of ISA for store that is immi 11 out to 5, rs2, rs1, 
function 3, IMMI 4 down to 0, performing a pass to leg and hop code. After 2 cycles, it's time to check the expected result that is result S I'm comparing with the store unit data underscore out that is the actual output. If there is a mismatch, it will display a failed message with instruction not working. If there is a match, it will display the store type instruction is working perfectly. And I'm displaying that a temp add to and D address out should match. Okay. Also, I'm checking the result S should match with the data out. All right, guys. So basically, we're checking both address and the data. And the rest concept remains same. Now, after this store instruction, I'm going to explain the B type instruction. All right. Here is the task for B type instruction. Now, let me explain you the task variables which have op1, op2, op code, function 3, rs2, rs1, immi, which is 13 bits, rd, result b, string command, imd, and here I have declared one branch underscore taken, which is 1 bit. Now, coming to the values, op1, op2 have randomized, op code have set to the B type relevant op code value, function 3 have initialized to 0. RS2 I have set to 5, RS1 I have set to 2, IMMI I have set to 13 tick B12, RD I have set to 8. Initialize branch taken to 0. Then based on the equation, I have calculated IMB. Now coming to the equation for B type, if you look at it, it is sign extension to in 12 down to 1, we have concatenated 1 tick B0. So based on this equation, we have calculated the IMB. You can see here. I'm checking the sign bit of IMMI. If it is high, then I'm concatenating MI 12 down to 1 with 0 and I'm doing a sign extension. If you see, basically I'm replicating 19 times 1 tick B1. If it is false, I'm concatenating 19 tick B0 with IMMI 12 down to 1 and 1 tick B0. So based on the equation, this formula has been written. Then I'm storing op1 at the address location rs1 of the integer file. I'm writing op2 at the address location rs2 of the integer file. Then I have asserted instruction as ready in. And then I'm checking the operation if it is matches with bq that is branch equal. Function 3 will be initialized to 0. And then I'm checking whether the data at the location rec file rs1 is equal to data at integer file rs2 location. If it is a match, branch taken will be asserted, else it will be 0 and string command will be bq. Similarly, if the operation is bne, that is branch not equal, function 3, I am assigning to 3 tick b001 and I am checking if the data at rs1 doesn't match with or not equal with data at rs2. If it is true, branch taken will be high, else it will be 0 and the string command will be bne. Now coming to branch less than, this is a signed operation. Here function 3 is set to 3 tick B100. And here I'm checking if the sign bit of the data at RS1, I'm checking, I'm performing XOR operation with sign bit, the data at RS2. If the XOR operation is true, then the data at location rec file RS1, it should pick up the 31st bit. If it is false, then it will be a normal unsigned operation where I'm comparing the data at RS1 which is less than the data at RS2. Right? So this is how if it is true, then branch second will be high as it will be 0 and the string command will be BLT that is branch less than. Suppose data at RS1 location is a negative number and the data at RS2 is a positive number. So in that case, RS1 is less than RS2, so it will be true and branch second will be high. So when you perform the XOR operation, this condition becomes true and it will pick up the 31st bit that is 1 because it's a sign number. Okay, so this is how the logic is calculated. Coming to branch greater than equal, this is again for signed operation. The function 3 is updated to 3 tick B101. The equation remains same, you can see the logic remains same. The only thing is if it is true, then instead of Assigning the MSB bit of the data at RS1, it will be negation of that. Okay. Similarly, if it is false, it will check whether RS data at RS1 is less than data at RS2 and that negation. That is for greater than. It is a negation of that. So if the condition is true, branch second will be high 
else branch again will be 0 and the string command is set to BGE. Now coming to branch less than unsigned, it is straightforward where I make function 3 equal to 3 tick B110 and I'm comparing data at RS1 is less than data at RS2. If it is true, branch second will be high, else branch second will be 0. Now string command will be BLTU. Coming to BGTE, that is branch greater than equal, this is for again unsigned. Function 3, I am setting it to 3 tick B111. So here it is just reverse, so I am performing a negation of the actual comparison that is less than. A setting branch taken out, else it is 0 and the string command is BGTE. And then I am driving instruction input as per this standard. That is, you can see here, it is IMMI 12 bit, concatenation with IMMI 10 down to 5, RS2, RS1, function 3. IMMI 4 down to 1, IMMI 11, follow up code. This is as per the IEC standard, the instruction will be generated. So now I'm waiting for two cycles and comparing now the actual output coming from the branch unit that is branch taken out, I'm comparing with expected value branch taken. If there's a mismatch, it will display a fail message. If there's a match, it will display the instruction is working perfectly. And also I'm checking if branch taken equal to high, I'm checking, I'm calculating basically first and then I'm going to check. So basically I'm going to calculate result B. So what is result B? It should be PC plus immediate. So I'm capturing the value PC out from reg 1 and I'm adding with IMB which I've calculated here. If it is not equal to 1, then result B should be the PC max out value. That should be PC equal to PC plus 4. So I'm displaying the expected value that is result B and I'm checking with the actual value that is IM at the route. Okay, and the rest remains same. So this is how the B type instruction task has to be created. Now after this, the next task which I would like to discuss is the flush task. Normally this task is used kind of a you know, flush in with an instruction in OP where we are going to drive a random value for the instruction input. In this case, a hexadecimal 13. And here also instruction is reading will be asserted followed by you wait for one cycle with a t-hole delay. So here uh, it is like when the instruction is given 13, the program counter will be a byte addressable during flush that I'm displaying over here and I'm giving the delay. I have also created one more task flush one. Uh, here the same behavior, only thing is I have not used the dollar display. So we will see below in for which type of instruction, which flush task has been called. Now already, in the previous slide, I mean in the previous videos, I have explained you the initial process, how the task has been called. But let me explain you again, take me through that again. So in the process, I have called initialize task first. Then I'm displaying that it is an R type test case is going to start now. I'm resetting, I'm calling the reset task. And I'm using a repeat loop, which is 10 times. I'm going to call the flush task followed by the R type instruction task and randomizing the input operation. So once this is completed, I will display the message R type test case passed. And then I'm going to display I type test case. Similarly reset, repeat the task flush followed by I type instruction 10 times. Once it is done, I'm displaying I type test case passed. Then I'm calling the load task for that again, load type test case. Reset, repeat 10 times. Here I'm using flush underscore one. Similarly, below you can see for store, 10 times again I have called. For jump instructions, we are calling the task 10 times using repeat, followed by load upper immediate, followed by the B type test case. If each test case or each instruction has been passed, there are no fail message. Finally, I'm going to print that the RISC-5 processor code verification passed and the final pass message will be displayed, okay? So this is all about the complete Verilog test bench for verifying the risk for IP code. The next step I'm going to show here is I'm going to add all the RTL codes on the TD to the, to the project which I'm going to create within the Xilinx IST tool. Then we will simulate and let's see the message, what exactly message you are getting, whether it's a fail, let's see whether any instruction has failed or all instructions are getting verified with a pass message, alright.